Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this daily word this morning. It's Wednesday, March 2nd. It is Ash Wednesday. <coughs> we begin our journey through the season of Lent together this morning and tonight at our Ash Wednesday service at 7 o'clock. I hope you're planning to join us in the fellowship hall. Worship will begin at 7 o'clock. We have really good things planned for our time together to set us on our journey through the season of Lent. And so join us in person in the fellowship hall tonight at 7 o'clock and um, we'll share in that special time together. It's a beautiful morning today, this Wednesday, March 2nd. I'm glad you could join me for our continued time together. So through the season of Lent, beginning this morning, I'm going to be using some um, Lent devotionals and some texts to help us in our journey together. But for today, I've chosen from the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2, and then 12 through 17. These are words that you'll hear <clears throat> tonight at worship. These are words that you've heard at least as long as I have been your pastor. Um, words that you have heard for years and years at our Ash Wednesday service. They are a good kickoff to us to think about um, what it means to begin this Lenten journey and what it says to us and then how we prepare ourselves for this journey through the season of Lent. So hear these words. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain, that all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread across the mountains, and great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will re not turn and relent, and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering, for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a feast. Call the solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast, let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? And so, as we begin this season of Lent together, the prophet Joel issues a warning, but also reminds us about what we are called to in this season of Lent. The warning is that God is near at hand, and that we should repent, return to God. Um, draw closer to God. When we gather on Ash Wednesday, as we will tonight, when we receive um, a cross of ashes on our foreheads, when we share in communion, we hear all the words of Scripture, um, we're reminded that in all of our lives, God continues always to seek us out, to sound the alarm in our lives, if you will, that we need God to speak to us, that we need God to forgive us, uh, that we need God to heal us, that we need God to restore us. The alarm, I think, for you and I in this season of Lent is an alarm that's personal, that's deep inside of us, that calls us to repentance. It's an alarm, I think, for the greater community um, folks right around us, 
folks in our inner circle, however big or small that might be, an alarm to build each other up, to be in relationship with each other. And then I think it's an alarm uh, for the broader world community. You know, we, we are in the midst of the war that's um, in the Ukraine and what all of that means and the struggles of people's lives and this alarm that's being sounded that's calling us to something greater. And that's the alarm of Lent, right? The alarm of, the alarm of Lent calls us to something greater, calls us to, excuse me, live our lives in a different kind of way. In the second half of it, we hear what God is saying to us. Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God. There is this stark, powerful call in the scripture for at least these 40 days for us to return to God. You know, I know we, uh, I'm going to talk about this tonight a bit, but we get, we get, and I do too, we get a bit self-centered, right? We, we like to look deep inside of ourselves. We find our, our strength in ourselves. And in this, this pandemic that we've been in almost two years, you know, it's become easy to turn inward. But God says that we should return to God with all that we have with weeping, fasting, and with mourning, and specifically, return to God with our hearts, to rend our hearts. Now, what does it mean to rend something? You know, if, you, if you rend meat, it's the impurities are taken out, the grease is taken out. If you rend um, gold or silver, the bad stuff rises to the top. God wants us to rend our hearts, to turn over all that we have and let the bad, ugly grease, if you will, out and allow us to be then reconnected to God in this kind of way. Now, the scripture says, we don't know if God's going to relent or not, but whether God relents or not, we should sanctify a feast gather together, which we'll do tonight, sanctify the congregation that we'll do tonight. We'll put ashes on our foreheads. We'll share in the bread and the cup. We'll sing songs. We'll hear the scripture. We'll be together. And we'll know in the presence of all of that, that God is indeed in our midst. So for us on this beginning of Lent, this Ash Wednesday, I wonder what it would mean for you and me to rend our hearts, to give ourselves directly and completely to God, and to allow all the stuff that rises to the top when meat is rendered or when gold or silver are refined, and to have that scraped off the top so that we can then begin anew in the season of Lent. That's my hope for us. That's what I think we're called to. That's what I hope we'll do tonight as we share in our time together. So be aware, if you will, of God's presence. Sound the alarm. Listen to it closely. The alarm that's in my life and the alarm that's in your life. And, and then seek God's presence in new ways that we may have never done before. So we began this season of land on this Ash Wednesday. And so I pray for God's richest blessings on your lives as we begin this journey together. And that especially today, you'll know God's love that surrounds you. You know my love for all of you. And I look forward to seeing you tonight at 7 o'clock, and then tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Have a great day.